Thank you, everybody. You're supposed to clap. Uh, oh, you don't. You, come on, you, you don't need to clap. <laughs> yes. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, everybody here. Everybody at home. Uh, so my name is Ethan. Hi. 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 Okay, and that's the show. Thank you, everybody. Just like to come out and say hi to everyone. So I have to tell you something. I want to be a dog toy. And I know you're thinking, this person is a person, not a dog toy. And you are right. But when I say I want to be a dog toy, it's because I wrote this book, I Am Not a Dog Toy. And to me, being a dog toy means picking friends that are really good friends for you. And the reason I wrote it is because when my son Ari was in preschool, he was really into this one kid who didn't want to be friends with him. And every day he would come home and he would say, Craig, no want to play with me. And some days he would say, Craig, play with me. But mostly it was, Craig, no want to play with me. And we were very sad for him. And, but we said, instead of trying to be friends with someone who doesn't understand how amazing you are, find a friend who really gets how awesome you are. So then I wanted to write a book about that. And I'm going to read it to you. And then afterwards, we'll talk about it. And um, that's the end of this sentence. I hope you like that sentence. Uh, fill out the sentence survey at the end uh, so I can get some feedback. All right. You bet it. All right, let's do this. I'm going to read it off of the screen so it's easier for everyone to see. We're just going to wait for it to appear there. Wait, you have a question already? Yeah. Okay, Aaron? Oh, oh, yeah. What's your question, real quick? You know what? We're going to cover that in a second. All right, hold on, Aaron. Okay, so this, uh, this is the book. This is the front cover and the back cover. You get to see both covers at the same time. Pretty great. All right, let's, I Am Not a Dog Toy by Ethan T. Berlin, that's me. <laughs> and then Jared, he's, he's not here, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. All right, let's go to the next page. Oh, inside cover, it says happy birthday. All right, next page. All right, this is Bear. Yeah, woo, yeah. Hello, I'm going to be your most favorite toy ever. We're going to fight bad guys, build forts, and fight different bad guys. Uh, you're kind of weird looking. I know, isn't it cool? I have so many pockets. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna put you over here. Splash. Oh, hello, you're going to be my most favorite toy ever. We're going to run around in circles, cuddle and run around in different circles. What? No, 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 <laughs> no. I am not a dog toy, but I'll play with you all the time. I will love you and chew you and lick you and chew you. That is such a unique offer, but um, I'm not a dog toy. <laughs> uh, dog toys are torn up, disgusting things that weren't good enough to be kids' toys. And I am a fancy kids' toy with lots of pockets. You have so many pockets. Thank you. Also, you are a dog toy because I am a dog and we're going to play together. And here is the big action sequence. Get ready for it. And they go, hey, oh, no, oh, smack, pow, take that back, guys. And they're very tired. Yeah. All right. Dog says, wasn't that the most fun ever? You're totally a dog toy. First, that was not the most fun ever. Second, that was so much fun. And third, I am not a dog toy. See, here comes my best friend, a kid, to rescue me from you, a dog. 
what is this thing doing on my bed? Grump. Um, I don't think she's your friend. She threw you into the wedge. Only toys she doesn't like go into the wedge. It's true. We're wedge toys now. You never escape the wedge. I would never throw you into the wedge. I am not a wedge toy. I am not a dog toy. I am a kid's toy. And this kid is going to play with me. Let's fight some bad guys. Mm. Let's ride around in circles. Shove. Let's make the biggest fort ever. Bump. Having fun? No, this kid is so boring. Maybe you should consider playing with the really fun dog. That's all I'm saying. I just like a really fun dog. No, no, no. I'm supposed to be a kid's toy. I'm going to find someone who wants to be my best friend. Someone who likes to fight bad guys and build forts and fight different bad guys. Someone who thinks it's really cool that I have so many pockets. Someone who is fun to play with and would never put me in the wedge. Someone who is... Hey, dog. Yes, bear. I think I'm a dog toy. I knew it. Let's run around in circles. I am a dog toy, and it is glorious. And that is the story of I am not a dog toy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to let you guys ask questions, but first, I'm going to ask some questions to you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Zoom, Zoom people, the people of Zoom, put your cameras on, please, so that we might behold your faces. Oh, hi, everybody. Look at that. Hey, it's Super Dave. Look at that. Yeah, Super Dave's up there. Look right there. Yeah. Yeah, everyone says hi, Dave. Hi, everyone else. All right, I have some questions. I know you guys have questions, but I have some questions for you. So, after you've heard this story, who do you think the better friend is for Bear? And who do you think? Exactly. And in this story, who do you think that is? The dog. And I have a question. Has anyone wanted to be friends with someone who did not want to be friends with you? Who wasn't nice to you? Yeah. And Maximus, how did that feel? It felt happy that there was someone who didn't want to be friends with you? I like your attitude, man. I need that. Yeah. I'm, yeah, Aaron? It made you sad, Aaron said, yeah. And what? Okay. Oh. oh, sad and happy because sometimes they would play with you and sometimes not. And who has had a friend who you wanted to be friends with who understands how awesome you are? Oh, hopefully everyone. Yeah? Emery? And how did that feel to have a friend who got you? Felt good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so now that we know what a dog toy is, who here wants to be a dog toy? Me. I do. I do. Yeah, I know. It's the best job in the world, being a dog toy. Yeah. All right. Now, who has questions for me, uh, or I could answer on behalf of dog or bear? What's your name? You're, uh, Ezra. What's going on, Ezra? What's your question? The same author as the Hugly Wuggly Spider. Let me see. I know he's very talented, that author. I know he's a really nice guy, and everyone says, ooh, I like that guy. Yes. Ah, yes. That's me. Have you read that book, Ezra? Yeah. 
Whoa, you know, they say three copies is the amount you're supposed to have, but two copies, <laughs> two copies is good. Okay, who else has, yeah? All right, Ezra has the books. That's fine. Yeah. She said she didn't have any copies of the book. Ethan? Yes. It's a voice. Hi, voice. When Grandpa? When questions come up in person, will you please repeat the questions yes. so that yes. those in Zoom can hear it? That's a good point. Yes. Yeah. That's a good point. Does anyone else? Who has questions for me? I wrote this whole book. You have more questions? All right. We're just going to go straight with Aaron. Aaron? All right, Erin wants everyone to have 100 questions. Please do not disappoint her. All right, Ezra, are you her brother? Okay. <laughs> you guys are a team. I like it. Ezra, what's your question? Yeah. Ooh, that is a very good question. Because the reason I think is, so he wanted to know, for people at home, when the dog is really nice to the bear and helps him out of the wedge, why didn't the bear just say, OK, you're my friend? And I think because sometimes, at least for me, it is hard to accept what is, <laughs> which means sometimes it's hard to realize you have an idea in your head of who you are, and sometimes it's hard to figure out, oh, wait, that's not really who I am. I'm this other person, and the, I have to figure it out and say, oh, okay, wait, that's who I am, and that makes me way happier than being someone I, I think I am, but I'm not really. So that's my answer. Okay, who else has questions? Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so I knew this would come up. So I don't know if we can get a picture of the bear. Oh, here we go, let's see. Uh, okay, um, so it might be hard to see, but right here, this is the ice cream pocket, and that's where he carries, well, it's hard to see, uh, he carries ice cream in that pocket. And down here, this is a rubber bands and acorns. One pocket for rubber bands and acorns. This is parts of sticks that he found that he wanted to carry around, even though mom and dad said, please don't put all those sticks. Um, and this is a hot pocket pocket that's just filled with hot pockets. Yeah. Yeah, he's got, well, well he likes the nacho kind. Yeah, 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 extra pockets. Uh, Tony Cologne. Oh, that is a good, so, so uh, Tony uh, is asking, can there be a spinoff about the Wedge Toys? I have been thinking about it. Um, does anyone have toys that they stick beside their bed in between the wall and it's filled with weird gross stuff like yogurt pouches and uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe now Halloween candy wrappers you don't want your parents to find. Yeah. 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 What's that? Oh, yeah. My kids, uh, the other day I opened the lunchbox at the end of school and it was filled with acorns. <laughs> so I don't know if what you're trading with a squirrel. I'm not sure what's happening with that. Uh, what, is anyone a baby? Oh, there's two babies. Look at this baby. There's a baby back there. Baby, do you have any questions? No, okay. Are there any questions from people at home? I can answer. You have, you are a baby? You have a baby? That's a lot of responsibility. You have two babies? Maximus, my man. I'm, Maximus has two babies. How old are you? 
Whoa, Miss Ethan, there is a question. Okay, we have a question. Okay. The question is, what inspired you to write this book? Ooh, what inspired me to write this book? Okay, so I have two answers to that. One is I wanted to write a book about my son's experience with chasing friends. The other one is I wanted to write a book. We talked about this a little bit before we started. Who has dogs? Raise your hand if you have a dog. Do it. And you have a chew toy dog. Does anyone's dog take their toys? My dog, Gracie, who looks like this, she's a big, white, fluffy dog. She always takes my kids' stuffed animals. So I often think about point of view. I don't know if you've talked about point of view in school yet. Point of view is basically how you feel about something and why. So when I looked at this teddy bear that was all torn up in my dog's mouth, I thought, what is this teddy bear's point of view? How does it feel about going from being person toy to being a dog toy in somebody, some gross dog's mouth. And I thought, that's a story I want to write. And who writes stories here? Do any of you guys write your own stories? Sometimes you type stories, yeah. So when you're writing stories, if you think about your point of view, how you feel, or about how a character feels, that's a good way to write a story. Duncan, you have a question? My kids have a bear. There was a bear that got free from a doctor's office. He wanted to know if any of the stuffed animals are real. And there, the bear was a stuffed animal that my kids got out of doctor's office that had a cute little sweater on it that got torn to shreds. And uh, I felt so bad for it. Yeah, Lucy has a teddy bear. Yeah. Oh, uh, Debbie, did you have a question? Yeah. Oh, what am I thinking about writing next? Debbie wanted to know. And you know what? I have another book coming out next year called How... Excuse me, I get so sad thinking about it. Called How to Draw a Happy Cat. Has anyone ever seen a drawing book where they teach you how to draw something? And it's like, draw a rectangle and then a dot. So it starts like that. And once the cat is drawn, the cat has a big frowny face on its face. And then the rest of the book is the narrator trying to figure out how to make this cat happy. And that might be based a little bit on my experience of being a parent and having kids who are never happy, who always want something else. Ezra. Uh, guys at home, uh, Ezra used to have a big teddy bear and I believe it was euthanized. I'm not totally sure what happened. He doesn't have it anymore. Do you guys, do, if we have enough time, can, I, can we make a story together? Do we have time for that? Okay, let's make a story together. All right, so for people Ethan, who... Before you, Ethan, before you begin, we can have those that are on Zoom also feed in. Oh, yeah. If they want to be able to do that, we can provide... I'll, I will be their voice. Okay, great. Okay. All right, so to make a story, a simple, simple story, you only need a few things. You need a main character. Okay, hold on, we'll get to it. You need something they want. They need something they want. And then you need obstacles to get in their way, reasons why they can't get the thing they want. And then if it's a fun story, they should probably overcome those obstacles and uh, get the thing they want. Okay, Ezra has a main character. Pikachu. Pikachu. All right, let's see. Let's get a, a non-branded character. All right, Duncan, is anyone's name here Joshua? We got a Joshua? You just missing a friend? What's happening? Anyone named Jack? You just, oh, you're just thinking of a main character's name? All right, so Jack is our main character. Who is Jack, though? Chloe, who is Jack? What do you think? 
Who should our main character be, other than we have a name? Is it a cat, a slice of pizza, um, a squirrel? Okay, Jack the Squirrel is the main character, all right? And if anyone at home wants to say, what does Jack the Squirrel want? Let's see if anyone at home. They're very quiet at home. All right, let's see. Ezra, what do you think Jack the Squirrel wants? Whoa, cool. All right, Lucy, what does Jack the Squirrel want? Acorns. Uh, Aaron. Play on the slide. Okay. Who hasn't talked yet? Ethan. Yeah. Jack wants a doormat to chew on. You know what? I think he does. Right? We all know that squirrels love chewing on doormats. Okay, so Jack the squirrel wants a doormat that he can chew on. Now he, we need some obstacles. What would get in the way of a squirrel? Emery. Opening a door. Oh, yeah, there could be someone who's constantly opening the door, and he's like, oh, whoop, 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 like that. Or he can't get in. Oh, is this an indoor doormat or an outdoor doormat? I was imagining it was an outdoor doormat, but you mean an indoor doormat. That's even better. Okay, so he's got to get inside the house. Ezra. Oh, so you're imagining he's at some sort of doormat depot and... And he's looking for a balcony doormat. Yes, a very specific, is that a suggestion? That is a suggestion. Okay. So he wants to chew on a balcony doormat. You know, you have a balcony, it has a door, you need a mat. Okay, so how, that's a big obstacle because now he either has to get in the house or climb up the side or get to it. How should he overcome these obstacles? With someone who, who hasn't talked to you, do you want to, do you have an answer in the star? Nope. Oh, really? Please don't call me. I didn't know. All right. Aaron, what do you think? Friends? Oh, two front teeth? Oh, a squirrel without two front teeth would be in big trouble. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I actually like this story. Uh, Ezra, how do you think he overcomes these things? Ooh. All right. So... Now we have one more story. This is the story of Jack the Squirrel. Are you ready for it? We just wrote it together. Once upon a time, there was a squirrel named Jack. And Jack wanted only one thing, what most squirrels want, an indoor balcony doormat to chew on. And Jack had found one. There was one in an apartment across the street. But he had a problem. One, he couldn't get in the door. Two, it was on a balcony high up. And three, he had no front teeth. These were a lot of problems he had to deal with. So, you know what he did? He invented something. He invented the Teetherama 2000. And it gave him teeth. And then he invented a trampoline. And it shot him up there. Yeah, but he, there was a, it had Bluetooth. So it was slightly, slightly different. Uh, and then uh, he, oh, he had a remote control that could open the door. And he went in and he chewed the, the doormat and that he got a, a doormat depot. The end. Thank you. Don't thank me. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And thank you at home. You're the ones who wrote the story. I'm just a conduit. All right, Debbie, thank you. Okay, what do we do now? Okay, uh, if you guys want to be thanked, I'm transferring you to the Ethan, thank you department. Ethan, yeah. there's another question oh. that's just coming in. Okay, what? Yeah. Okay, so it's coming from afar. What's that? And the question yeah. is, was there a specific dog that inspired your book? Yeah, Gracie the dog. She's a standard poodle. And speaking of teeth falling out, she has really bad teeth. Uh, please brush your dog's teeth. It's, um, 
It gets very expensive. Um, yeah, Gracie the Poodle, she's a standard poodle. Sometimes she looks like a big white fluffy sheep. Uh, and then sometimes we shave her and she looks like a small white fluffy sheep. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Uh, and now, Debbie. Let's give Ethan a big hand of applause. Round of applause. Yay! That was so much fun. Thank you so much. And he's not going anywhere right quite yet. Um, you're going to have an opportunity to buy his book, and he will sign it for you with your name on it, right? And um, the folks on Zoom will also have an opportunity to buy the book, and they can do so um, by going onto our website and connecting with Roman's Bookstore in Pasadena, who are our wonderful sponsors. Um, our, we do have another author coming I want you to know about, Ann Kofsky, who wrote the Kayla and Kugel books. And she'll be joining us just on Zoom at 11 o'clock on Sunday, December 5th. So please join us and sign up to be there. And we also have a few copies of her book here for sale if you want to look at that. And don't forget to join us for a very rocking fourth night of Hanukkah concert with Jason Meshies on Wednesday night, December 1st at 5 p.m. And you can also sign up for that on the website, and it's free. Ezra, are you coming? I'll tell your auntie about it. Auntie knows about it. She's been doing a lot of the wonderful PR for us. Um, so there are people I would like to thank. The museum here that you'll be able to hang out and have some more fun here. We're very, very um, grateful that they allow us to have our programming here. And that's Allison. Allison, wave at everybody. So thank you to the um, Southern California Children's Museum. Thank you to my PJ Library team, Robin, Brahinsky, Wave, Karen, Galliana. And thank you to our Federation's Executive Director, Jason Moss. And to the real behind the scenes guy, Jake Tavel, who you can't see, but he's the main reason all of this is getting done today. Um, so enjoy the museum for the rest of your time here. If you're interested in buying books, we're here, and Ethan would love to sign them for you. Thank you so, so, so much. Have a great day, everybody.